message that would change the hearts of many. For over 60 years, Billy Graham has dedicated his life to proclaiming a timeless and consistent message of love and forgiveness through salvation in Jesus Christ. All right, so this morning we're headed back to, we headed back to Charlotte to go to the airport and fly home. And we have a few hours to, to uh, go do something, so we came by the Billy Graham Library. They have a couple of hours of stuff you can do here. They have a bookstore, they've got a tour of the whole thing about his life. And, and it's raining a little bit. It's raining, it's just fine. And we don't have an umbrella because my husband said it wasn't going to rain. It never rains when yeah. we go places. So, and then here's the, the Graham family home place right here where Billy Graham grew up. That's one of the things that we can see on the tour. So, and we'll here's the... that, but we're going to the library first. So right here they have like a setup of the dairy farm that Billy Graham grew up on. The cow will start talking to us in a few minutes, but the cow looks real, really real. Well, hello there. Didn't see you coming. My name is Bessie. I love that song because it comes right out of the book of Psalms. This whole building is really cool. The rafters. Beautiful building. Yeah, and all the, um, the wood beams going across. It has structures on all the wood beams. And circulation of 5 million readers. Billy Graham made it clear many times that these are not his answers, but God's answers, revealed in the Bible. As the hour of decision touched so many lives on radio, God showed Billy and Graham to draw men, women, and children to the saving love of Jesus Christ. Join us now for the journey of faith. With his sister, his dad. And this stuff here is authentic stuff from there from their farm when he was growing up. Since way back in the 40s. Isn't that amazing? Why did so many people from all over the world come to hear him preach? Because he took the gospel, just like the Bible says, to the ends of the earth, even to places where the gospel has been forbidden. But that's a good question. Why did so many people come to see him? Let me tell you. Today, regardless of their beliefs, people wonder how God used an ordinary man to inspire millions to respond to the message of the gospel. There is only one person that can send revival, and that is the Holy Spirit. And we are here to honor and glorify only one person, and that is the man in the glory, Jesus Christ. What were his roots, and how did God shape his life for this special task and how could he have achieved so much in just one lifetime for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son jesus and for almost 60 years god led millions into arenas and amphitheaters stadiums plazas and parks around the world all hoping to satisfy their deepest spiritual yearnings in billy's powerful and compelling message they were not disappointed he tells us to walk not by feeling, but by faith. I said, when you don't feel anything, God may be closer to you then than ever before. And we're praying that in these days we might feel old faith, heaven sent, Holy Ghost revival that will sweep our nation from coast to coast. God began working early on Billy through God and parents. Young Billy Frank was like most American boys who came of age during the Great Depression. He liked cars, girls, and sports, and dreamed of becoming a major league baseball player. But every Sunday, like it or not, Frank and Laura Bryan took their youngsters to the associate reformed Presbyterian Church in Charlotte. Then, one night, a family friend persuaded Billy to go hear visiting evangelist Mordecai Ham. That night, God began to call Billy. 
one night when the invitation was given, I just said, Lord, I'm going. Yeah. is to tell people in the power of the Holy Spirit with confidence that there's a way to deal with sin. And it was Jesus who said, I am the truth. When Christ comes into your life, the Holy Spirit gives you a new love for other people and a burden to tell them about Christ and his salvation. For Billy Graham, where genuine, terrible poverty exists and it should never exist in our affluent society and we ought to do something about it. But I want to tell you there is a spiritual poverty in America that is far worse than material poverty. And many of you here tonight, well-dressed, come from nice homes, are as poor as Job's turkey as far as God is concerned. Your soul is lost.
in spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that this was a great moment for world evangelism. He was God. He was also man. He taught them as one ethical authority. The people are invited to Amsterdam, from Lebanon and Syria. They saw before that they are the only people preaching the gospel of Christ. But in Amsterdam, when they saw the thousands of people serving the Lord, they were encouraged. I picture me scattering seed with the Bible in my hand, and that's what we've been doing in our organization. That's what you've been doing in your churches, scattering seed. And these seeds are sent to the gospel, and they fall upon good ground. Nothing symbolized the division between the communist states of Eastern Europe and the rest of the world more vividly than the Berlin Wall erected in 1961 by East Germany's communist government to stop the escape of its citizens to the West. Premier Khrushchev even came from Russia to inspect it. For almost 30 years, East Germans tried every means possible to escape and many were killed in their attempt to be free. Christians on both sides of the wall prayed that God would one day intervene and knock it down. God heard their prayers. Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union began to weaken. And Billy Graham was in the forefront, continually seeking to deliver the good news of hope and salvation to the oppressed. During this time, God softened the hearts of many communist officials, enough to enable Billy to bring God's word to hundreds of thousands living behind the Iron Curtain. Being able to preach in communist Eastern Europe was an incredible break.
Whatever your race, whatever your religion, you need Jesus Christ as a person in your life. He's not a creed. He's a person. I don't have to be judged. I don't have to go to hell. I don't have to be lost. My soul has been redeemed. I'm going to hell. But I've got to first repent of my sin and receive Christ as my Lord and my Savior. God is a God of love. He loves you. And if there's one thing I want you to take from this great park when you leave here today, it's this. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. He takes away all that stuff that's been causing the emptiness and the trouble, and he gives you a peace and a joy and a sense of forgiveness that you never knew before. How many of you here tonight are broken? Fed up, but you don't know what to do. You give your life to Christ tonight and you will have supernatural help in breaking those chains that bind you. All right, so this is the home where Billy Graham grew up as a kid. And um, they moved it about like three or four miles from where it was to this spot here. It's a pretty neat little house. And there's the visitor center. It's a really good tour in there. Uh, there's no cost to come through. Um, it's a really nice building. And they have uh, what they call the milk bar in there. It's like a cafeteria with some good food. It's a big silo. walking over to the burial site. So here on the burial site you can see the woods here. It's beautiful. I like the way they did the landscaping. It's probably really nice looking in the summertime and in the fall with all the leaves. Alright we just got done with the tour and through there and now we're in the bookstore. So when we got here, it was pouring rain and we didn't have an umbrella. Didn't think it was gonna be raining on this trip. And when we walked up, uh, two lovely ladies opened the doors for the building for us. Those two glass doors and welcomed us in. Uh, it was really nice of them. So if you're ever in uh, Charlotte, uh, North Carolina or anywhere near, it's uh, really worth visiting here. It's a really, uh, really interesting place. Uh, really neat to see how God used Billy Graham and how
how he came up from just growing up a little farm, went to a uh, kind of a prayer meeting, um, evangelical prayer meeting thing, and became a Christian, and he's touched the lives of just millions and millions of people, and he continues to. His ministry will be around for a long time, even though he passed away a couple years ago at 99 years old. So, anyways, thanks for watching.